Okay, Jim Ginger, this is uh, just a conversation. Both of you feel free to interject uh, uh, as we go. But uh, yeah, Jesus uh, rose from the dead 2,000 years ago. And uh, we celebrate that fact. But that's also uh, something that's hard for us to connect with. So, so the question is, is how does his uh, life make a difference in your life today? You want to start? I'll start. Okay. So honestly, I see Jesus pretty much every day in my life. Um, I work at a very stressful place. <laughs> and I've worked there for six years. And I know other teachers who have had some really hard things happen to them. And all six years, I always, you know, have always been blessed by being safe. And he's given me encouragement to keep going. And um, even through my hardest days, um, I know when I'm having a really hard time, I can just stand there and I can just say a simple prayer and I just feel his presence come over me and I know that I can do it through his strength and um, that he's just going to surround me and he's put me there so I know that I can do it because he's put me there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, one, of the, one of the most interesting things is that I've always prayed that we have a family around us, uh, whether it be extended family or whether it be blood family or even the neighbors. Um, before I moved in with Ginger, after we got married, uh, I had that family at my parents' place. When I moved into Grandma's, I had it there. Um, and now that I've moved into her place, it's there too, it exists. Uh, and, and for me growing up, most of my buddies, they had no clue as to who their neighbor was. Uh, even living in an apartment, they didn't know. Um, there's at least four guys and one young lady all in her apartment of 10 people, or 10 units, uh, that have looked out for her. And they've continued to show that love to us uh, and continue to look out for us. And we, we've been absolutely blessed to just have these people in our lives who will you know, uh, pick up our mail, is from the simplest task of that, to uh, letting us know that you know, our, our, our cabinets or cars aren't secure and they need to be locked. Uh, the storage units outside, and people that, you know, uh, have that family and that community, which is something that we've always looked for, and, and it's uh, one of the reasons why we continue to stay uh, at Playa Church. Um, and uh, we've uh, transitioning now from her apartment into Grandma's uh, house full-time, and we continue to see with the new neighbors there that uh, kind of hometown feeling, uh, a small community that, we, that we've established and they recip reciprocate uh, the, uh, the kindness that we've shown towards them. So that's, that's one of the good things. No, I think both our grandparents have also really shaped us um, and, and through our parents, uh, both on her side and both on my side. Uh, our grandparents have shown us God's love. They've been strong Christians. And, um, you know, uh, I've heard that um, when you get out of debt uh, and when you have your money in order, you can change your family tree. Uh, and both of our grandparents uh, took the time to save their money. They took their time to make good investment choices. They took the time to tithe to church and to make sure that their money was going to the right place. And as a direct result of that, our parents are better off. And we've seen uh, that trickle down to us. Um, Ginger's seen it with a car loan. Uh, and we see it now with my grandmother uh, recently passing. Uh, we're allowed to live in her house. And literally has changed our family tree uh, because I want Ginger to stay at home. I want her to raise our kids. Mm -hmm. And we have that ability now. Uh, LA is expensive. Westchester is even more expensive. And there's just, there's no way that we could afford that to pay a mortgage, to raise our kids in a family environment, to raise our kids near our home church. Uh, so that they have the benefit of that family community. And here we have a house dropped in our lap, literally. And all we have to do is do the maintenance on it 
and do the upkeep. And God has blessed me with those skills. I can cut the cost on it. Uh, you know, I can do a lot of the stuff myself. These are God-given talents. Okay. And, and so we watch God shape our lives. We watch Him um, continue to show us the way by the choices that are put in front of us. Let, let me ask you a question. You say, uh, Ginger, mm -hmm. I really like what you say. God has me here. You say, <laughs> full of, of meaning. And, and God's made a difference to the people that he's placed in circumstances in your life. But how do you know that's God? How do you know if you didn't, uh, uh, how do you know it's not happenstance, circumstances that are just uh, coincidental? Or how do you know if you practiced, uh, say, Yoda or, or yoga or, or, or Buddhism? H how do you know some of the same things wouldn't occur? Why do you glorify God about those things? I I feel I feel the presence of God and it's not um it's not like a voice that comes down and says, you know, pl you know, go here, but it's just like when before I got that job, I prayed about it and I knew that I needed to go somewhere. I was living at my parents and I knew I needed to get out, go somewhere and it was interesting because I'd have interview after interview and they seemed really like anxious like okay I'm gonna hire you and I'd just be like okay God your will like shut the doors if you want them to be shut and I was about to go to San Francisco and the door was shut and I was like okay and other jobs doors were shut and then that door was just open and um, I knew it was God because it was not something that I would do on my own like I wouldn't go down to South Central and be like oh here I am I'm gonna come work here <laughs> So I knew it was God because I was just like, really? Like, you really want me to go there? And I actually fought it. I was like, no, you know, like, so I'd go get other interviews and the doors would be shut. And I was the only one that really, like, God opened up and they kept calling me like, we really want you to come work here. We've got a job opening for you. And it was at the grade level that I wanted. Just like, okay, so it was actually like a step of faith. And I was like, if you want me to do this, I'm going to go do it. But you've got to, you know, you've got to be in control and you've got to take care of me. And so he did. He found me an apartment. He got me a car and um, found a church. <laughs> so it all, it all happened um, without my wanting to do it, kind of. He directed it. And so that's how I knew because I wouldn't have done it otherwise. <laughs> I'd be like, nope, stop sign. I'm not doing that. And um, I just, I felt his presence like, nope, this is where I want you. And I said, okay, I'll go. And six years I've been there and I've been protected. And I mean, I have students six years ago who still come up to me and say, Mrs. Fisher, you know, you were my best teacher. Thank you so much for teaching me. And I could have never done it if I hadn't said, yes, I'll listen to you and I'll go. So that's how I know. I know it was God. <laughs> and, and you, Jim? You know, uh, if you believe in the law of averages and that everything has a 50-50 chance of actually happening, then from here out, my life will be incredibly horrible. <laughs> um, I, I've been blessed in every venture that I've set my foot into. Uh, I have a strange relationship with my father at work. Um, we don't talk about how much money I'm going to get paid. He doesn't know what my expenses are and he doesn't know what my bills are. But our company does good when it needs to do good. And when I have larger bills that I need to be paid, our company does really well. I have no control over the amount that I get. Um, while grandma was still alive and she was doing the payroll, uh, I would have arguments with both grandma and my father. I said, you know what, you're paying me too much. You know, I, I don't need this much, I can live on less. And so my father told me to talk to grandma and grandma would tell me to talk to my father. <laughs> um, there was no resolution in the matter. There was no need for me to know how much I was getting paid because I knew that I was gonna be taken care of. And as recently as uh, last week, we had an amazing month uh, at Fisher Machine Shop. I mean, absolutely amazing. I have a couple bills that are coming in right now. We're a little worried about taxes coming up. Um, and, and I got a bump in, in my pay. Uh, and it's not something that I asked for. Uh, it's not something that I communicate with my father to. So there's only one person that can have that much control over my life. There's only one person that can guide me in the decisions that I make. Um, you know, I needed more structure in my life with God in it. 
and Playa Church was here. I found out that you guys were here. I needed more God in my life to keep me on track, to surround myself with people who were God-like to set that example for me. And I was able to join staff and, and get that guidance that I need to make the connections that I needed to make to have the positive influence. People like Scott, people like um, the Likadinis, people like you and Patty, you know, uh, watching Jesus go through his struggles and, 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 and seeing him make the decisions that he makes for his daughter. Watching uh, Mike and Kathy raise Dominic, you know, these are people who I need in my life. These are people who are walking that light, who are walking that path with God. And it's, it's helped me keep centered. Absolutely fantastic. And you're underneath drive on the other side. That's it. Yeah, baby. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, uh, this is great. I, uh, I really appreciate you guys uh, sharing all this. Uh, I, I feel like there's an opportunity here that I have with you, most of other people. In fact, I think this is the only uh, couple that we've done so far. And so, can you talk just a little bit, since I have the two of you here, uh, how, is he, uh, how is he alive in your relationship? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, <laughs> <clears throat> um, as far as our relationship goes, uh, I'm learning more and more how much baggage that I bring to the relationship. Oh, no. Um, and my wife is amazingly sweet not to recognize some of that. Um, but uh, once again, I'm, I'm able to look to those around me uh, for guidance and for assistance. And for me, my brother has been able, and, and he and his wife have been able to guide me a lot. Um, my brother and I grew up together <clears throat> at each other, at odds with each other, up until uh, he was probably in, in college. And then our bond grew stronger. <clears throat> and uh, he went to Hope International. He has his uh, marriage and his faith uh, strong with God. That's where he met his wife. And um, that's something that was important to me when looking for a mate, is I needed a strong Christian woman. And God has brought me Miss Ginger. <laughs> and uh, my brother and I are able to bounce ideas off of each other. We're able to see the flaws that we carry into, this, into our relationships that have brought into our parents. And, and I've had a really good, uh, confident partner that I could say, hey, you know what, look, this is what's happening at home. You know, uh, did you guys go through this? You know, how did you overcome this problem? Or, you know, uh, what, what, sh- what should I do uh, about, you know, always antagonizing my wife? You know, how did, how did you guys deal with that? Because, <clears throat> We are products of our father, and, and we are products of our mother. And it seems that my father's personality kind of sticks out extremely strong, you know, because we're guys. So uh, both my brother and I have been able to look at ourselves, and we've been able to see, you know what, this is what we see is wrong, uh, that dad didn't do so well. This is what he did really well, and we want to keep those attributes that he did well, and these are the ones that we need to work on. Um, so for me, uh, having, having an older sibling who's gone through it, having people at, at church that we can talk to as well. Uh, I've learned a lot through Bible studies through Scott and Janet and some of the trials that they've gone through. And I've even learned a lot from Janet from Mercy Stitch and from the early days. So I, I think that's been really good. And uh, I'm starting to get used to her family. Uh, and some of, the, some of the bonds with her family, you know, are starting to form. And, and so... There's questions now that I can ask to them, like, okay, this is, you know, what Ginger is doing. Like, why, why did the other siblings, did her other kids, uh, brothers have that, or, you know, or her sister? So I love you. It's, it's, it's a good relationship that's, that's growing. And, and for you, how, how has God in the relationship for you, Ginger? So I think mine was actually a learning experience for our relationship. Um, well, first, we met at Playa Church. We did. We did. <laughs> so he was actually the first person that greeted me um, my first day at Playa Church. 
I remember thinking that I really liked his personality and he oh was such my. a cutie pie. But um, took us not a while. my doing. Took us a while to find each other. But, That's um, his doing. Yes, it, it was. <laughs> but um, for me, um, I learned that I have to put God first because I noticed what I was doing is if I had a problem when we got married, instead of going to God, I started just going to gym and putting everything on my husband. And so I realized that what I was doing was God wants to be first. And I was like, and then it started be causing problems because Jim was feeling overwhelmed with my neediness. Little. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, so I see God because it, um, when I started going to him first and saying, God, help me and please give me the strength instead of, you know, calling Jim and being like, Jim, I need help with this. Then I noticed our relationship was getting better. And so for me, it was learning to put God first in our relationship. And then once he was first, then our marriage would succeed and do better. So it was just finding that balance of, um, yeah. Still working on it. And still working on it. I know I'm working on mine. It's, <laughs> I know that I'm going to be a work in progress. And I know I'm going to be a work in progress. Well, we all are. To the day that we die. But, we all are. you know, it's, it's something that I'm definitely willing to do. Uh, especially for her and, and for no other. Well, and I think once we do, um, and when God is in a relationship, then he helps you deal with the other person or, re or you know, helps you look at yourself and you're like, oh, okay, so maybe it's not him, maybe it's me, and, you know, making sure that it balances out and that you are compromising and not so much putting just everything on the other person. I I think uh, one of the things that's really helped is having you uh, push the devotional. Oh. <laughs> and I think that's, that's been really good. Uh, we have a devotional Bible. And that church gave us. Right? Yeah. I actually did not know where it came from. Yeah, it was from um, okay. Bridal Shower. They gave yeah. us the devotional Bible, yeah. Well, because I noticed that when, before we got married, um, I was very big on devotionals every day and, you know, praying. And then once we got married, it seemed to kind of slack off a little bit. And a I was lot. like, oh, you know, I found my man. Like, we're good. And I was like, and that's the whole thing of putting God first, though. And it's just like, you know, like once you get married, it's so much more important to put God first because otherwise your marriage is going to fail. And especially since we're thinking about starting a family, it's so like I want us to yeah. have a strong foundation to bring our kids into. So, yeah, just keeping that up every day. <laughs> Thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. So any, any closing words or just things from the heart you'd like to, to, to share before we uh, uh, wrap it? I'm just, uh, I'm just happy to be here at Playa. Uh, I'm happy to be in a church family that has allowed for me to grow. Uh, and for that, it's, that's the biggest thing. Even, even in helping with the youth kids, uh, I, I, I found... Um, God's hand there. Uh, I don't consider myself a scholar of any nature. Quite frankly, I don't like school, but being forced to put a Bible study together and understand it enough to teach it to the kids has brought it to a level that I can understand it. And that's something that I have not vocalized a lot. And for God to see that I struggle with understanding his word and for him to put away in my life on a junior high level to understand it, there's nobody that could know that. There's nobody that could accommodate that except for him. Hmm. And I also have an amazing partner who helps me with all that. Okay. And she has the learning I experience. You. You're amazing. She makes a good, <laughs> good little lady, amazing little lady. No, you're amazing. <laughs> We'll cut that but out. I was just going to say, at church, sorry, <laughs> at church, um, even when we were dating, um, we have lots of eyes at church that held us accountable, and now that we're married, like, we still have accountability, and I think that's so important, yeah. and at times it would get annoying, like, really, you're going to ask me that again, <laughs> but I think that it's something that's really important, yeah. and I really um, appreciate that at Playa Christian Church, how people invest interest in you and that they really take the time to make sure, you know, that you're walking the right path and making sure that you're doing okay. And, yeah. you know, even, you know, we've been married what, almost two years. Two People years. are still asking us, like, how are you doing? Like, everything okay? And it's just nice to have that community to know that even if you're not doing okay, that there's someone there that you can talk to. 
and um, that can help guide you. Yeah. So. It's amazing. Uh, it's just amazing. You guys are great. Thank so. you. <laughs> we'll we'll call it call it a day. Call it a wrap. And That's good. Uh, <laughs> Doing good.